Welcome to another episode of Plant Fanatics. If you're thinking about starting a food forest or a fruit garden, this video is for you. I'm going to be going over a bunch of rare and common cold hardy fruit trees, so stay tuned. The purpose behind this video is not to be an in-depth growing guide to every single one of these trees, but to simply give an overview of a few trees you may be able to grow in your garden. If you live in a planting zone lower than zone 5, this isn't the video for you. So without further ado, let's get into this. The first tree I want to talk to you guys about is Asamina triloba, or the pawpaw. While this tree can be found in nature quite readily on the east coast of the United States, it is not very common in the home garden, so when I use the word rare to describe this tree, I'm saying in the home garden it is rare, it's not very common to find. The pawpaw is the largest fruit native to North America. Native Americans used to eat them regularly, and when explorers got here they believed it looked like a papaya and they weren't sure what it was, so sometimes pawpaw gets exchanged for papaya, though that is incorrect. In nature, these trees can get 20 to 30 feet tall and over 15 feet wide. However, with regular pruning, this tree can be kept at whatever size you would like. If you don't know how to prune fruit trees, we have plenty of videos on that subject. It's one of the most useful skills you're going to have as a fruit grower. The pawpaw can be grown in a planting zone as low as 5 or as warm as zone 9. Now if you guys don't know your plant hardiness zone, you're going to want to figure that out as soon as possible before you buy a fruit tree because that's what defines your average lows and highs in the area you live. So don't buy any fruit trees until you know your plant hardiness zone. Pawpaws definitely have their own texture and their own flavor, though most people describe it as a mango banana mixture. It is a great substitute for bananas and banana nut bread. A lot of people make ice creams out of them, and a lot of people eat them fresh. They're very flavorful, and they're different, so if you're looking for a fruit that's different, this may be the tree for you. The next tree on my list is one of my personal favorites. It's a peach or a nectarine. For those of you that don't know, a peach and a nectarine are the exact same thing minus the fuzz. A peach has fuzz, and a nectarine doesn't. Now, peaches, in my opinion, are one of the most flavorful fruits. They're one of the juiciest fruits. They're one of the sweetest fruits. They're amazing. They have a multitude of uses from preserves to pies, and you can eat them fresh, so they may never even make it inside to make those pies. That's how good they are. Recommended hardiness zones are going to be from 6 to 8. There's a few outliers to this, like the uh, Reliance Peach in Zone 5 will do well, Late Flowering Variety, and the Florida King that will do well above Zone 8. So there's a little play in that, but in general, Zone 6 to 8. Peaches and other cold hardy fruit trees do need a certain number of chill hours. I always get a few angry people in the comments wondering why I didn't list chill hours for peaches and nectarines. It's going to differ variety to variety. And for those of you who don't know what chill hours are, it's the wintertime hours below 45 degrees that are necessary for a fruit tree to flower and fruit. It's going to differ variety to variety, so I can't list that out for you guys. That's something that your research will have to turn up when you're researching your plant hardiness zone. Next on the list is a very unique fruit tree that many people haven't heard about, and it's a che tree. On the difficulty scale to find, this one is very hard to find. They will pop up from time to time, so if you do find one, you need to get your hands on it fast. Che trees are interesting for many reasons, one of them being that they're dioecious, meaning that male and female flowers are on separate trees. Out of all the che trees, I only recommend one, and it's the variety Norris. Why is that? That's because it doesn't need a male tree in order to set fruit. It's self-fertile. It's also seedless. It's one of the only che trees that's seedless. So self-fertile and seedless cannot be beat. And while most che trees do have thorns on them, Norris is completely thornless. And the fact that throws me off more than anything about the che tree is that if they're grown on their own rootstock, they're prone to suckering. So they're grafted on an Osage orange rootstock, which is completely out of left field, in order to give them more of a tree form and also to keep them from suckering. Because these are turning out longer than I expected them to, I'm going to make this a multi-video series. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video, turn on that notification bell so you'll know when I upload the next videos, and share with any friends interested in the content. Thanks for watching, guys.